Our Father, who art in heaven, please open our eyes that we may see your word the way you would like for us to see your word. And let's apply it to our heart, body, and mind. And Lord, if there's anybody sick, please touch them because you're the healing master of everything in this world. And we do love you so. And we all ask this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Let's grab our basic instructions before leaving earth and let's see what the Creator, Father God, has in store for us today. Alright, we are on Luke chapter 8. And it came to pass afterwards that he went throughout every city and village, preaching and showing the glad tidings of the kingdom of God. And the twelve were with him. And certain women, which had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities, Mary called Magdalene, out of whom went seven devils, and Joanna, the wife of Chaz Herod Stuart, and Susanna, and many others, which ministered unto him of their substance. And when much people were gathered together and were come to him out of every city, he spoke by parables. A sower went out to sow his seed, and he sowed some fall by the wayside, and it was trodden down, and fowls of the airs devoured it. And some fell upon rock. And as soon as it sprung up, it withered away, because it lacked moisture. And some fell among thorns. And the thorns sprung up with it and choked it. And others fell on good ground. And spug sprung up and bore fruit. A hundredfold. And when he had said these things, he cried, And he that has an ear, let him hear. And his disciples asked him, saying, What might this parable mean? And he said, Unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God, but to others in parables, that seeing they might not see. And hearing they might not understand. Now, I'm going to say, this is for the people that say, I don't want nothing to do with God. I don't, I, I don't want nothing to do with Him. I don't like Jesus Christ. I don't want nothing to do with Him. <laughs> because you tell them a parable, and they're not going to understand it. But you tell it to somebody that, that knows who Jesus Christ is, and they're going to understand it. Alright, <clears throat> now the parable, let's see, he said, until you it is given, okay, we're going down down 11, now the parable is this, the seed is the word of God, you see, these by the wayside are they that hear, then come with the de uh, cometh with the devil, and taketh away the word out of their heart, lest they should believe and be saved. And they, let's see, they on the rock are they that which, when they hear, receive the word with joy, and these have no root, which for a while believe, and in time of temptation fall away. Now, like I said, it's people that did that, that's done that don't don't want nothing to do with him. Because for a minute, they may want something, and then they fall away. Alright, and 
that which fell among the thorns are they, which when they have heard go forth, and are choked with cares and riches and pleasures of this life, and bring no fruit to provision. So you see, the people they more they care more about what they have or what they can get. They they're not caring about the one thing that means the most. What means the most to you? To me, it's my spirit hooking up with Jesus Christ and staying with Him. But on the good ground are they which in an honest and good heart, having heard the word, keep it and bring forth fruit with patience. No man, when he hath light a candle, cover it with a vessel, or put it under a bed, but setteth it on a candlestick, that they which enter in may see light. For nothing is secret. That shall not be made manifest, neither anything hid that shall not be known and come abroad. Now, I have a lot. There is a lot in that Bible verse right there. Can you see what's going on in the world today? Do you believe what they tell you? Are you wearing a diaper on your face? Do you not understand that when you, that, that it's manifest here, when they have any kind of ritual, they wear a mask. Go back and watch that movie with uh, Tom Cruise in it. They all have masks on them. And that's what they want you to do. Look, they want you to copy what they want because you are taking away your mind away from what the Creator God has for you. And you are going to go through... Oh, I'm so scared of this. I'm scared of it. Oh, my, I don't want to get it. When you ain't done no research on it. And that's your own fault if you are blindsided by this Propaganda. Yeah, I was going to say it, but I changed my mind. So, that's up to you. If you want to believe this nonsense, and if you want to get that shot, you go right on ahead. But I guarantee you, you better look into it. They've already done had one batch out here, and he, the guy had his videos taken down, and he was killed. He was literally killed because he put the video up. As he was ministering these shots to these people, they were dying right there. Is that what you want? Look, mm, this Gates person, and all, you know, you don't know him. You have no idea. How can you trust people you don't know? I guarantee you, if I come up to you and I said, hey, this bubble gum is the greatest bubble gum there is. And I gave it to you. And you took it because you trusted me. But whenever you laid down and went to sleep, you never woke up the next morning. Think about it that way. Do you really trust people you do not know? You need to start bringing out your spiritual side of you and discern who is for you and who is against you because if you believe the people that's against you you just might as well just stay with him because hey that's where you're going to be at <coughs> all right Take heed, therefore, how ye hear. Bring out that spiritual warfare in your body. And say, is this for me or what? For whosoever hath to him shall be given. And whoever hath not, if you don't have the Spirit of God in your, in your life, 
then you don't have it. And you're not going to desert it, and you're going to keep on going down. Get saved. Ask God to come into your life. He will come in there, and He will open your eyes, and you will see this stuff. But you can't keep on going back to the damn vomit and getting all your information. All right. From him shall be taken even that which he seemeth to have. Think about it. If you if you say for years, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian. And you know I don't like that word, but I'm using your terminology. I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian. But yet you are listening to the majority of your TV set, that tube, that oh, black mirror. Yes, black mirror. Look at it up. See what a black mirror is. It's witchcraft. And they put this witchcraft on you. Did you know? You remember Laverne and Shirley? You knew, remember that um, uh, her last name was Williams? Did you know she was a witch? No, you probably didn't. Did you know that just about every movie that you watch has a witch in it? And it also has warlocks in it? That's a man witch. So, think about what you're doing. Why would you believe a witch? Hey, Satan already has your soul. You just might as well deal with it. Now, if you don't believe any of this that I, I'm saying, that's up to you. I don't care. Because I know, I, I look at it. I do my homework. I see what God wants me to do. On this iPad, I watch what what I think that the Creator God wants me to watch. Sometimes I get it wrong and I have to get out of here. That's like you look at Netflix. Having that damn cutie movie out. Do you really think that TV is for you? Oh, it's just that one movie. No! There's a lot of them in there. Start watching what you watch. Watch it. Watch it with spiritual eyes that the Creator Father God gave you. Because if you don't, it's going to be taken away from you. <coughs> <coughs> Alright. Then came to his mother and his brethren and could not come at him for the press. For it was told him by certain which said, Thy mother and thy brethren stand without, desiring to see thee. And he answered and said unto them, My mother and my brethren are those which hear the word of God and do it. You have to hear the word of God and you have to do it. Because I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you like this, when it's too late, prayer is not going to help you a bit. Alright. And it came to pass on a certain day that he went into a ship with his disciples, and he said unto him, them, Let us go over and to the other side of the lake. And they launched forth. But as they sailed, he fell asleep, and there came a storm, a wind on the lake, and they were filled with water, and were in jeopardy. And they came to him, and awoke him, and saying, Master, Master, we perish. Then he arose, and rebuked the wind, and the rage of the water, and they ceased, and there was a calm. <coughs> And he said unto them, Where is your faith? And they, being afraid, wondered, saying one to another, What manner of man is this? For he commanded the, even the wind and water, and they obey him. Have faith in Jesus Christ, that he will calm 
the storm around you. He will give you peace. You know this junk, me and Rick, we make in fun of it. We literally make in fun of it. Why? Because we had the peace to do so. And we do not have the fear. When you get the fear from the devil, when you get that fear, you got the devil. Because he ain't got nothing. He will most definitely take Jesus away from you. The fear takes Jesus. Can you understand what I'm trying to say? Alright. And they arrived at the country of Gadaran, which is over against Galilee. And when he went forth to the land, there met him out of the city a certain man, which had devils a long time, and wore no clothes, neither abode in any house, but in the tombs. Now, you're not going to find that now. You got. Let, let's look at it this way. Your house is full of dead man's bones. Why? Because they don't have the love of Jesus Christ. Can you see that now? Can, can you imagine your house for people that does not have the love of Christ in their in their life. And I could go into this word love and you all would not believe at the things that I have learned just about this word love. Anyway, when he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell down before him. And with a loud voice said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of God, Most High? I beseech thee, torment me not. For he commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. For oftentimes it had caught him, and he was kept bound with chains and with fitters. Now we've already done looked this word up. And he broke the bands. And was driven of the devil into the wilderness. <coughs> and Jesus asked him, saying, What is thy name? And he said, Legion. Now, Legion means there's many. It's not just a name. It means many. Many. You got all kinds of devils in you. Demons. And it, you know, I was watching a video the other day where they said that a Christian can have a demon. I don't think so. If you have Jesus Christ in your heart, how can you, look, you cannot serve God and then serve man or two. You cannot serve two masters. How can you have Jesus Christ and the demon in there? No. I can guarantee you, if one come knocking on your door, Jesus Christ would most definitely be right there to open it and say, You ain't coming in here. It's my territory. Mine. You see? <laughs> because many devils were entered into him, and they besought him that he would not command them to go out into the deep. And there was there... A herd of many swine feeding on the mountain, and they besought him, and he would suffer them to enter into them, and he suffered them. Don't eat pig. <laughs> Don't eat pig. That right there should be enough not to. Oh, see, then went the devil out of the man, and entered into the swine, and the herd ran violently deep, a steep place into the lake and were choked when they that fed them saw what was done they fleed and went and told it to the city and the country and in the country then they went out to see what was done and came to Jesus and found the man 
out of whom the devils were departed, sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed, and in his right mind, they were afraid. <coughs> they also which saw it told them by what mean he had possessed of the devil was healed. Then the whole multitude of the country of the God arends around about besought him to depart from them, for they were taken with great fear, and he went up into the ship and returned back again. Now when I ask you this, do you think that Jesus dusted the feet off of his dusted the feet off his feet? When he left, because they turned him away? Ask you that question anytime something goes up. I mean, that's like, um, if you was to go into Bill Gates' house, what are you going to see? What do you see when you see Trump's house? I don't see the truth. Israel is not the truth. And if you think Israel is the truth, you might as well bear with him. Alright, now the men out of whom the devils were departed besought him that he might be with him. But Jesus hid him away, saying, Return to thy own house, and show how great things God had done unto thee. Go back and show them what, who I am. Let them know, hey, look, Jesus Christ can actually heal you. He can take care of you. All right. And he went his way and published throughout the whole city how great things Jesus had done unto him. And it came to pass that when Jesus was returned, the people gladly received him. Great, he didn't because he wouldn't have went by for they were all waiting for him. And behold, there came a man named Jairus, and he was a ruler of a synagogue. And he fell down at Jesus' feet and besought him that he would come into his house. For he had one only daughter, about twelve years of age, and <coughs> she laid a dying and let's see but he as he went the people thronged him and a woman have it now this right here throg does not mean that he would they was beaten this was talking about they just kept on grabbing around him and all everybody was touching him and all all right and a woman having an issue of blood 12 years which has spent all her living upon uh, physicians, neither could be healed of any. Think about this. Is your blood, is it pure? Is it good blood? Is there something in it? Come behind him and touch the border of his garment. And immediately her issue of blood stretched, stanched, okay. And Jesus said, Who touched me? When all denied Peter and they that were with him, Master, the multitude thronged thee and pressed thee, and seest thou who touched me? You know, all these people around here, you want to know who touched you? Who, whoever's around you has touched you. And Jesus said, Somebody had touched me, for I perceive that my vesture is gone out of me. In other words, who, whoever touched him had the faith that Jesus Christ could do it. He has, uh, let's, let's say this, he, he has like a garden inside him of different things that are inside him that can heal whatever needs to be healed and all he has to do is touch and it comes off his shelf and right into your body all right and when the woman saw that she was not hid she came trembling and fell down before him she declared unto him before all the people 
for what cause she had touched him and how she was healed immediately. She felt it. She felt, do you feel Jesus Christ when you get on your hands and knees, when you praise the Lord? Can you feel him? Because I guarantee you, he will come to you and you can feel him. You can actually feel him. You can feel the joy. And she, let's see, and he said unto her, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace. While he yet spoke, there came one from the ruler of the synagogue's house, saying to him, Thy daughter is dead. Trouble not the master. But when Jesus heard it, he answered him, saying, Fear not, believe only, and she shall be made whole. All you have to do is believe. See, this is the problem with today's world. We don't, we, we, I included me, we do not have enough faith. We don't have it. Because we are so bombarded by all these lies and deceits and people wanting to just destroy you without you even realizing it. And without them even realizing it. So, <coughs> Okay, and when he came into the house, he stiffed no man to go in, save Peter and James and John and the father and the mother of the maiden. And I wept and wailed her, but he said, Weep not, she is not dead, but, asleep, but sleepeth. They used to have people come in and cry professionally tears that was not even uh, family members. And they laughed him to scorn, knowing that she was dead. So they knew she was dead. And then they laughed him to scorn. They laughed him, yeah, right, uh -huh. Just think about that. And he, let's see. And he put them all out and took her by the hand and called, saying, Maiden, arise. And her spirit came again, and she arose straightway, and he commanded to give her meat. In other words, feed her, give her something to eat, she's starving. And her parents were astonished that he charged them that they should tell no man what was done. Now, why does he tell people, this one I want you to tell, this one I don't want you to tell? Because people are so confused on what is what. You have to have the faith that Jesus Christ had gave you that you will most indefinitely know. Hey, look. <coughs> <coughs> Jesus Christ did it. Alright, we're going to read 9 tomorrow. Hugs and kisses. How to donate to PayPal. You mash on poor man sewing. And then you come up here. And you look for a belt. And you mash on a belt. And right here you hit on donate to poor man sewing. It's people like you that help me out, and it is really appreciated. And I hope you many blessings in this hard times that we are fixing to go through. A lot of hugs and kisses to you.